La próxima ponencia estará a cargo de DJ Frank de Qua Symphony, que nos va a comentar sobre Building Better Collaboration Between Development and Testing in a DevOps World. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for, for joining us. I'm a, as as Lorena had introduced me, my name is DJ Frank. I'm a product engineer uh, with QA Symphony. And today we'll be talking about building better collaboration uh, between your development teams, your development members, and your actual testers in a DevOps type world. Just a, a little bit about myself and about QA Symphony. Again, my name is DJ Frank, product engineer with QA Symphony. Um, I've been a developer, albeit and admittedly not a very good one. Um, I've been a product owner, again, not a very good one. And I've also been a tester, most importantly. I've been a tester for quite a while, and I would admit I am somewhat of a pretty good tester. A little bit about QA Symphony. QA Symphony started as a product, uh, as a test case management product back in 2011. From that product really kind of stemmed into more of a platform, an agile test case management platform that's now even um, transgressing into a DevOps world, into this new and evolving DevOps position, this DevOps philosophy, right? ever since moving, where else can we go past Agile? And the next, and the answer to that is, is actually DevOps. So the, the, the QA Symphony platform as a whole, uh, we have a slew of products. Our first, of course, is going to be QTest Manager. So that's the test case management tool for all methodologies, for waterfall approach, for Agile approach, and now even for DevOps. So um, in, including the tester in the actual software development lifecycle. So often, a te the testing role is really forgotten about. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, and really, it's, it's compressed, right? We want to be able to test as fast as possible to release as fast as possible, because at the end of the day, we want to release our products into the market at a competitive rate, at a fast rate, um, to, to make money, right? So in addition to QTest Manager, we also have QTest Explorer, an exploratory testing tool that really is going to empower your manual testers to be involved in the development process, to be able to incorporate feedback into the code development without really even knowing code, being able to track exactly what a piece of software is doing directly with the click of a button on their machine, and being able to incorporate that feedback directly into the development process. The QA Symphony platform is fully REST open, so allowing developers to integrate in with our tool, allowing us to integrate in with other tools, increasing collaboration across the, across the entirety of it. Down at the bottom, we have QTest Insights. So from kind of a top level, looking down, one single pane of glass around reports and analytics. How, how can we measure the, the speed of development, the, the speed of testing, and really put a metric on this, this DevOps, this, this actual DevOps process. And now on the, the left-hand side is really now where QA Symphony gets focused on DevOps. Uh, with two aspects. Uh, the first is QTest Scenario, which is an open source plugin uh, available on the Atlassian market. Uh, I know we saw some, some Atlassian folks here. Uh, QTest Scenario is a, an, an advanced Gherkin editor that lives directly in, um, in your development, in your developer's workspace. It allows them to um, create Gherkin style scenarios in these scripts, um, in that Gherkin language and framework, directly as the developing code, right? Writing these scenarios in a common language that automatically is going to translate into executable builds, executable code. And then that feeds into QTest Pulse, which is our enterprise BDD TDD DevOps tool. It's a tool that's creating rules. It's creating rules between development and testing and production and, and even your operations, right? So the, the whole goal really of, of DevOps is to remove this wall that exists between your development, um, the, the pre-production, and also your operations, right? So after you release into production, removing that wall and providing constant feedback throughout. So QTest Pulse provides that. It provides that, that platform to do so for constant communication and collaboration, instantaneous integrations, and providing that incremental feedback. So QA Symphony, again, as I mentioned, the, the champion of the tester. Uh, we really started as a test for, with the tester in mind. Uh, we really think of ourselves as the champion of the tester. And providing a tool set that allows the tester to be embedded, again, throughout the entire SDLC. So from planning, building, developing, um, and then actually releasing itself. But now really, let's move into DevOps, right? The, the point of this conference, really DevOps, the, the new and improved, where do we go from here? So DevOps itself, it's a little, a little bit of a history lesson. Uh, how did we get here, right? So everyone's familiar with Waterfall, our old legacy style. I, I build a requirement, I design something, a business, a functional requirement for my, 
my, my, my product, and then give that product to maybe a business analyst. So more in the beginning, the business analyst is gonna take my requirement um, and then give it to a, a developer, right? I'm gonna instruct a developer to actually build this, code this for me as I had designed it. And then we'll move one, one slot over to the testing role. So a dedicated spot for a tester to test that product, give feedback to a developer when it breaks, and impl implement that feedback back in to re resolve all the bugs. But right at the end of the day, we want to make this timeline go faster. So, so how can we do that? So then early, mid-1990s, mid the Agile methodology comes along with the, the seven principal, principles of Agile development, reducing documentation, extreme programming, et cetera, et cetera. And really, there's not a, the, the tester itself is included in that. The tester is, is now being asked to test earlier. Test early, test often. The tester is asked and being brought into the testing cycle in more of the actual building phase, so when, when they're designing and actually building. And then now we're, with Agile, as it's been adopted and, and we've progressed more to this Agile methodology, we now can take that even a step further, right? How do we condense this even more? How do we go from releasing a few times a year to, uh, like GitHub, releasing 500 times within a month, which is incredible. And, and DevOps itself, we, we need to take it a step further. I, I would argue the one difference between Agile methodology and DevOps is the fact that DevOps is not a methodology, it's a philosophy. It's not a, it's not a framework with which you can follow to actually increase speed, it's more of this philosophy on how we improve culture, how do we select the right tools that are going to increase collaboration across, my, uh, across all my verticals, so that horizontal integration there. So again, Dev, DevOps itself is really starting to be developed. Uh, Forrester, Gartner, everyone's starting to do it. We have a room full of people here that are all really dedicated to DevOps, which is absolutely fantastic. So how do we, how do we empower the tester to be involved in the DevOps process? How do we empower a tester to be included in the actual building phase, in the designing phase, in the coding phase? Right, because by design, as I admit, I'm not a very good developer. But as a tester, I'm expected to participate side by side, paired up with developers to increase this speed to market. So the answer to that, of course, is automation, including automation across the board everywhere, not just at the end, not just end-to-end -end automated runs, not just build runs at the end, having functional unit tests being executed in a CI, CD, so continuous integration, continuous development, continuous deployment method. And, and how do we empower the tester to do so? When we do this, we, we obviously, there's gonna be a few problems. Testers by trade might not necessarily know a whole lot, lot about automation, not be very, um, very, very um, akin to the actual coding and development and automation in general, but we, we still, we, we need them to, we expect them to. And so how are we gonna automate? And, and there's a plethora of actual tools to automate from open source tools to paid for tools, Jenkins, Bamboo, um, a slew of tools and a variety of languages that are just going to empower a tester. And there's a different level, uh, a, a variety of levels of these tools. So from basic Python, which you can include in Jenkins builds, to, to very complicated, um, fully automated entire platform of, of automation suites there. But with automation, of course, we're going to have problems. So by empowering this tester with automation, there's obviously going to be problems. And so uh, I believe, and QA Symphony believe, that we've identified the five problems that are going to prevent a tester from really, um, or, or I should say, pre prevent a tester from holding up this, this DevOps transformation, this DevOps philosophy. So these, pro these five, five actual problems we're going to walk through, what do they mean? And then more importantly, how do we solve these five problems, right? How do we, um, again, empower the tester to uh, not hold up the actual DevOps life cycle in itself? So from the actual coverage, visibility, version control, specifications, and then at the end of the day, how do we manage all this? Again, from, a, from really thinking from a tester's mindset, a tester's actual perspective. So problem number one, lack of test automation coverage. When we, we take a step back to Waterfall, again, a tester, a tester has a dedicated spot, an allocated timeline, a time frame where they're giving specific instructions on what to test and what it should actually, what, to, what the expected results should be. Right, so they're, they're given specific documents around the coverage of what's being built and then the coverage of what they need to test needs to align with that. So of course, auto automation, automation is going to um, only exponentially increase that coverage that needs to be tested, right? If I'm automating, that's including more and more tests. And for a test to keep up, we need to absolutely document all of the automation coverage, which is gonna be pain point number one. 
bringing us to pain point number two, again, with, with all, this, all these different types of tests, with, with all this coverage that needs to be tracked and reported, we, we need visibility into that. We need, we need a tester to be able to know exactly what piece of the coverage, so what piece of the build is being tested, where that, what, what branch that's being tested on, why that's being tested, and an assessor fundamentally needs to understand that to be able to successfully complete and perform um, their, their, their dedicated role. Problem number three is again now with all this coverage, all this visibility, how do we maintain all these different versions, right? In, in DevOps, we're releasing multiple times a day, if not multiple times a week. We have multiple branches of code that need to be tested in varying ways, right? If I have different branches across different browsers, I need to test across different browsers and make sure I'm maintaining the versioning, right? Because we're going to be developing at different speeds based on common roadblocks. And then we need to make sure we're maintaining the actual version control to align with what specifically the tester needs to complete. Problem number four, clearly defining what needs to be tested. So this kind of summarizes a little bit of the first two. Again, providing a tester with the explicit documentation on what they actually need to test. Again, if, if I'm testing one specific web browser, I need to know the actual specifications of that branch of code, why I'm testing it, what, that, what the impacts of my test have in a DevOps world, um, in, in my DevOps development cycle. And then last but not least, number five, with all of these problems, with all of these versions, with all this massive coverage matrix and requirement traceability, we need to maintain this test bed. Having hundreds, if not thousands of tests that a tester is responsible for across a variety of CI, uh, continuous integration, continuous development pipelines and automation stacks, I need to be able to maintain this. I need this to be documented. I need to be able to easily find this. So tagging things, being able to easily search through and validate those. So now that we have these five problems, Let's solve these five problems. So how, how can we align um, our, our teams, our testing teams specifically, to overcome the, these five obstacles, right? How, how can we not only empower testers to be influential in the DevOps world, but be successful? Three ways that we're going to do this. The first is around promoting collaboration. So again, around the philosophy of DevOps, in, in implementing and including this, this culture, the, this collaborative culture in communication, number one. So in, in communication, so having instantaneous communication around the world. We have developers in, in every single country, we have testers in every single country, and we're not always gonna be sitting right next to a developer being able to ask, what is it I'm testing? Why, why, is, this, why is this needed to be tested? So communication is gonna be essential. So in Agile, we had Scrum stand up, daily stand ups to be able to um, kind of cover the actual collaboration aspect. And in DevOps, it's going to be even more important. And then with that, the second piece of collaboration is going to be around our tool sets. So with a, again, with a wide variety of tool sets that are always fully integrated in with each other, we need that instantaneous integration. We need changes to invoke changes in other tools. Rather than waiting for API synchronizations, we need changes to drive other changes instantaneously as they're made. As a branch is pushed, it needs to trigger the build automatically. So now a tester doesn't need to actually do that. They're monitoring the test, they're building the actual test, but as soon as a developer pushes that code to production, so that push, or again, remember removing that wall between development and actual operations. Before DevOps, we have a very, very, very vertically siloed approach to actual testing, right? We have four distinctive kind of roles within the software development lifecycle, right? So we got our project managers, our business analysts who are going to really define what it is this project needs to be. How do I need to build this? What is this product going to be? What are the functional requirements? What are the business requirements? And then from there, another vertical, somewhat of, again, looks a little waterfall here, in development. So I have distinctive development teams represented and building their respective requirements kind of siloed off from each other. And then again comes the tester, their own specific vertical that is, is not really horizontally aligned here. And then lastly, operations. So if we again imagine that wall that exists whoop, right between the actual pre-production, which would be our first three verticals here, and then operations, DevOps is again gonna try to remove that wall. So to do that, we need to, we need to look at the, these vertical alignments horizontally. So we need to horizontally align all of our teams together. So horizontally align developers across teams, across products, horizontal, horizontally aligning our testers across teams and across products as well to again increase this collaboration from communication, from tool sets. So even if different products are being tested on different tool sets, the specific integrations between the two must be there in order to again increase 
this collaborative effort. Step number two is clarify up front. So right, if we're testing early and we're testing often, we have that problem of not knowing what version is being properly tested, having too much coverage or not enough coverage, um, and, and being able to maintain all versions. So being able to clarify up front exactly what it is that needs to be tested. In a traditional development timeline, again, we have these very vertical siloed approaches where everyone has a designated, a designated slot for what they need to achieve. Um, we, we need to design something, build the requirements, code it, test it, and deploy it. Right? So, so the problem then uh, arises. So we need to take this test first approach, all about incorporating feedback, which will be our next point, but being able to test again at every single portion. Right? right as we're building the code, being able to test. Right as we are developing and then releasing that code, being able to test even more. So our testing builds on top of one another. Unit tests become functional tests, becomes end-to-end -end testing. Testing from beginning to end, testing, taking a test first approach. And then lastly, and in my opinion most importantly, is integrating this feedback. So having a continuous feedback loop. So we talk about continuous integration of builds and automated tools. We need that same approach for our feedback. So allowing testers to imp increment, imp incrementally push this feedback back into the software development lifecycle at every single stage. So again, when we're, when we're actually building the code, having testers having builds being triggered by the code pushes, which automatically are going to implement feedback. Not only do we have automated feedback from our builds, we have manual feedback as well. A manu not everything can be automated. M many things do still need to be manual, manually tested, but it's important that we integrate this feedback back in. So if we look at a, a CI, CD classic pipeline, again, we have the, the deploy or the, the, the planning, developing, testing, staging, and actually producing. Typically, again, when, when we test at the end, it stops everything, right? If we wait till the end to test, everything's going to be halted, and we're, we're not able to, to, again, push everything in terms of timelines together to release faster, release more quickly. So again, to do that, we need to have this feedback integrated in at every single aspect possible. When we commit code, it needs to be immediately tested. Right? Again, those unit tests, those build tests, building into functional tests as we actually can set up more automation and as this, this product becomes developed and becomes an actual usable um, production. Which now brings us kind of back a little bit into QA Symphony and, and how our products are helping teams do this um, from both an agile and more importantly, a DevOps approach. And the first of four here, just to walk through, the first of four is gonna be through QTest Explorer. So this is the least DevOps, DevOps tool that we offer, but it still is really going to empower testers to be involved in the actual development aspect of products. The QTest Explorer tool, again, with the click of a button, it's an annotated documentation tool. So no matter what you're doing on your, on your GUI, it's capturing everywhere you're clicking. It's capturing what's actually occurring behind the, behind the scenes. It's capturing the code for you. So even a tester who might not know how to write code, who might not really understand what is being coded, can still see that. They can visibly see the code on the screen. They can see it as it changes. And then the, the Explore tool can be used in many ways. Right? It, it, four fundamental use cases we have for the Explore tool that we see are our defect submission. So being able to document a defect from a developer's perspective as a tester. So I'm testing, as it breaks, I might not know why it's breaking. And I might not be able to decipher the code, but the Explore tool captures the actual failure as it occurred on my screen. So even though I'm, I'm, I might be telling a developer, this broke, I did this, I clicked here, the developer might not, might not actually know why that's happening. And the Explore tool is gonna to capture all that code um, and, be, and allow me as a tester to provide him or her with the code to be able to better triage it. Our second use case is for around actual testing itself. So actually um, increasing the, the speed in which I can create test cases. So I can use the Explore tool to kind of document what I'm doing. I can execute just maybe ad hoc exploratory tests on a new build. And the Explore tool can actually generate test cases. It can generate manual test cases of exactly what I've done. So it captures that out all for me. And again, and again at, the, at the end of the day, the, the, the theme here is saving time. So by allowing me to automate the process of even building test cases is only going to further allow me to do that. Third use case is around automated documentation. So we talked about documentation for defects, but uh, the Explore tool can also be leveraged for training materials, so training other testers, training builders to think, excuse me, training developers that build the code to how, how to think like a tester, how, how they can review this automated documentation and allow them to see what exactly it is a tester is doing 
And then more importantly, how the tester is doing it, right? Again, we're increasing this collaboration between your developers and between your actual testers. So our next tool is QTest Manager. So QTest Manager itself, as I had mentioned in the beginning, is our, um, is our test case management tool. So again, that, that tool specifically for the tester. So the, we are the champions of the tester, always keeping the tester in mind. But from a DevOps perspective, how, how can QTest Manager be incorporated, right? How, how can we Im implement the, a test case management tool, which, which typically can be thought of as more of a waterfall approach, into a DevOps model, into, a, into this DevOps philosophy here? And to do that is all through integrations. So we talked about these instantaneous integrations. And we probably have a lot of developers in the room who I'm sure are familiar with, with APIs. Right? A lot of people are. Um, but uh, let's, if we're kind of thinking about saving time, if we move from Agile into DevOps, we need to increase APIs. APIs themselves are, are fundamentally flawed when it comes to volume, when it comes to truly being real time. And so the answer to that would be a webhook. So a webhook is the next and newest and greatest invention from an API perspective. So increasing collaboration through instantaneous integrations between tools. And as I mentioned in the beginning, allowing tools to invoke changes in other tools. So for example, our integration with, with the Elastian stack within Jira is built off of a webhook. So it allows when changes in Jira are being made by a developer, by a business analyst, that's actually invoking a change within our tool. Our tool does not need to pull for changes, does not need to actually um, generate an API request in order to pull that information to provide to a tester. The changes are being instantaneously pushed over from the actual developer tool, the actual Agile ALM. And then in addition, in, in terms of increased collaboration, this, this passing of information back and forth. So not only is testers receiving this information, but as I mentioned, we also need to show the developers and tell the developers what it, what it is exactly we are doing. And in that, so we're actually, we're not looking at our tool right now. This is actually a screenshot of Jira, so the Atlassian um, Agile um, Lifecycle Management Tool. And so you can see, though, there, there are still a number of aspects that our tool is pushing into this, again, via Webhook. So Atlassian does not need to pull for this information. Our tool, where the testers live, as soon as the tester makes that change, it's instantaneously pushed directly into the Atlassian stack. Whether that's traceability, so down towards the bottom, when we talked about pain point number one around coverage, making sure we have that wide variety of coverage, and making sure not only a tester knows that, but that the developers know that. So a developer living in the Atlassian environment can directly see all the associated test cases, the, the unit tests, the build tests, the automated framework tests, and, and more importantly, the manual tests that are being, being executed specifically for their build. So increasing collaboration and saving time there. And as well, you also see the, in the middle here steps to reproduce. So in terms of automatically documenting that defect for your developers, for your actual Jira users as they live within their own environment, right? In, in, in integrations and collaborations between tools. Next uh, is around QTest Pulse. So our actual tool that's been built specifically for the DevOps world. Um, QTest Pulse is, is a rule generator at heart, but it's so much more than that. The QTest Pulse tool is built entirely off of webhooks, invoking changes between your code repository and changes actually uh, for your testers. So a developer, as I develop code, I can actually leverage Pulse to actually generate a specific test case off of the code that I just wrote, right? So when I'm building code in my specific language, I can write rules in Pulse that translate that directly to, for example, Gherkin. So even if I'm, I'm, I'm writing in, in a Cucumber test in, in my code repository, Pulse is going to turn that into an actual, Ger, an actual Gherkin test within the QTest, uh, in the QTest Pulse tool, which then I can actually execute. I can turn that into a build. I can execute that with, 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 with a Maven, with, with, it, with Ant, with anything. So not only, again, does QTest Pulse integrate your Git into Jira or your version control into your application lifecycle management tool, but it's, again, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a rules driver. So Pulse itself underlyingly can, can allow your, your Slack channel, allow your testers to create defects directly from Slack. As soon as I find a defect in testing, I can write in a Slack channel that's actually going to generate that defect instantaneously into the Atlassian stack, right? So again, increasing that instantaneous collaboration and communication and also across the, the tool sets and, and your tool stacks. And then lastly, kind of bringing everything all together um, around reporting and analytics. 
So at DevOps, we, we have this approach of working in smaller teams, kind of dividing everything up. Uh, later this afternoon, um, you'll hear Amazon's approach, or what they call the, the pizza approach, or the, the pizza. So only having enough pizza to, to feed the correct amount of people. So when we break these teams up, though, while it's great from a DevOps perspective and a, and a build and testing perspective, that can all get lost when we kind of try to tie everything back together from a reporting perspective. Right? How do I manage the, the different teams that are working together? How do I manage the different tests that are being executed on different branches? And so with, with Insights, that, that ties everything together. Right? The, the, your, actual, your, your agile tools act as the central repository for all tests that are associated back to your requirements, your functional and business requirements. So think about traceability there. So by associating those together, we need something to be able to report across everything. So be able to report across your unit tests that are being executed in an entirely open source tool that exists on, on one developer's computer or on, on your actual um, on your cloud bees or on your actual Jenkins, as well as your manual tests that a tester is performing. So being able to have one single pane of glass with which you can view the entire coverage, the entire velocity of what's being executed. Right? Being able to fundamentally track and associate metrics to your actual DevOps progression. Right? How do I track this philosophy? How do I justify the, this philosophy change and this culture change from adding new tools and, and spending more money to this DevOps approach? Right? How, how can I make that argument to, to complete this process? So that is all done within QTest Insights. Uh, it's an entirely customizable platform. It, it interacts with you dynamically. Um, and really, it, it's just the culmination of of all the testing, of making that DevOps transformation, of, of increasing collaboration, of making sure we're capturing all of our coverage, all, all of that traceability, and, and at the end of the day, making sure we're, we're shortening timelines as tight as possible to be able to release as fast as possible, to be able to keep up with competitors, um, and, and at the end of the day, being the, the, the first ones to produce our product, which we, of course, think is the best to market so we can allow all of our fantastic users to then develop with it. So thank you.